let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Hello, 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 and welcome everyone to Ignite Your Success. Oh, my goodness, I almost said a completely different word than success with Ranchelle. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce. It's a good thing because I'm your host. And today's show is about how shift happens part two. And I have to be really careful with that particular word as well. Uh, I'm really excited to share this next component with you. Last week, I had some great feedback from someone and she said, great show. Whoa, it was a lot of information to digest. So I'm going to be kind of taking what I talked about last week and diving a little bit deeper into it. Uh, First, I wanted to share a bit of, of my own personal story. So I have found that most successful entrepreneurial women struggle um, with how to increase their revenue without having to work harder uh, or sacrifice more time away from their families. And this is usually the uh, the women that I work with. Um, What they really want is the time and money freedom they dreamed about. Uh, before they became an entrepreneur. And if you're an entrepreneur, you probably decided to get into business because you wanted more of that, right? Um, But what ends up happening is we a lot of times have a job, right? It's our own company, it's still a job. And what I find is that a lot of my clients have thought that the problem really was they needed another new strategy. So they invested a lot of time and money into the promise that a process is all that they need. But the real problem is that a solution for more revenue and to have more time to do what they love cannot be uncovered with the same mind that created the situation in the first place. And I know that's a lot to digest, but what's really required is a new approach to how to think about their life, their business, and their problems. And this is really my story and why I decided to become an entrepreneurial success, success coach, because I help entrepreneurs uncover how to double their income by discovering the keys to release comparison, the concept of competition. I say concept because that's really what it is and eradicating imposter syndrome. So if my story resonates with you, I encourage you to connect with me at RVB, which stands for Ranchel Van Bryce. So RVB at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Email me. I'd love to connect. So today's show, part two of how to make shift happens, really comes from this idea of are you feeling stuck in business? And are you trying to figure out how to shift or to move beyond where you are and you're not really sure what the next step is? Because learning how to make a shift is not as hard as we think it is. A different outcome is possible, and it is has to do with that simple two-degree shift in your mindset and strategy. Now, strategy is important. It's absolutely right. We can think all the things that we want. We can have the best affirmations we desire, but if we don't take action, we don't have a strategy, it's just not going to happen. I really, from my perspective and, and as an entrepreneurial success coach, I talk a lot about the combination of both science and spirituality. I think it's essential. So I'm going to start a little bit today about diving into this how shift happens part two by talking about some of the science. So one scientific piece uh, and a statement that can go along with that is how uh, is beliefs are just decisions. So I'm going to say that again, beliefs are just a decision. I was at a a conference earlier today and the host, she says, that's a writer downer. So, So that's a writer downer. Beliefs are just decisions. You see, when we're kids, we have had, we have experiences. We interpret these experiences to mean something, right? Our interpretation is based upon many things. And unfortunately, that would take a whole hour on its own. But just say there's a lot of things that come into play when we're interpreting Um, our experiences. We then have another experience that's the same or similar to that first experience. We already have kind of put a meaning to it, 
So we offer the same meaning to something very similar. And over time, we hardwired that belief into our brains. So that's why I say beliefs are just decisions. It's hardwired. So it becomes a thought, then it becomes a reality, becomes a reality because it's hardwired. So there are all time, there are times that all of us have experienced when a belief has been challenged with new evidence and we can change our minds. So, which is fantastic because if you understand that a belief is just a decision, you can make a new decision. So I'm going to share a, a quick story with you. Uh, in When I was growing up, both of my parents are entrepreneurs and, um, and I, I went into business with them. My first business was Curves for Women Franchises and I was in partnership with my parents. And I remember my, I think it was my dad told me one day, you know, you're so great at starting business. You're just not a very good finisher. And it wasn't the first time that I heard that from my parents. It was something that came up over and over again. I tried brownies, didn't like it. So I started brownies. I didn't finish it. I tried playing um, ball and I wasn't very good at it. So I didn't finish it. So I had this belief that I was really great at starting things, but not good at finishing things. This truly affected my success when I was at Curves because I, as long as I was starting a new business, I had eight franchises. So as long as in startup mode, I was feeling really confident and that I knew what to do. But the moment it went into, so now what I do, what do I do with all of these businesses? I started to wane. I started to, to falter, but only because I believed that I wasn't a good finisher, right? Um, years later, like I'm talking 20, maybe 15 years later, I decided I wanted to do a telesummit. And that was before they were actually a thing. So before we had summits, 2020, I think that my first telesummit was 2017, 2018, around there. And I remember being so afraid to start this telesummit because that meant that I would have to do all of the things. Now, I'm great at finding uh, great people. I'm great at hiring wonderful people, but I still had to start something and I still had to finish something, right? So it was difficult, certainly, from that perspective, because I believed, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to finish this. So Beliefs are just decisions. Once I made a new decision, once I decided that I was going to start this summit from the beginning and the end, I was going to either do the website, right? If I had to do the website, I was going to do the copy. I was going to do the sales. Uh, if I couldn't do it myself, I would be the project lead, the project manager, and I would take it all the way through. That was a challenge and it was okay. It was okay. I did what I did what was necessary. The second piece that I want to share with you, I know I'm sorry, I realized, I just realized I'm talking so darn fast. I get so excited when I talk about how to make a shift happen, right? So let me take a deep breath, calm myself down so that I can share this with you at a pace that will be easier for you to follow because you see, I already talk really, really fast, right? I have so much that I wanna share with you. So excited. Okay, the next piece of this, okay, is our brain is a goal achieving machine. So what does that mean? When we decide that we want to do something, we wanna have something, we wanna be something or someone, our brain, and in fact, the specifically your reticular activating system kicks in, your RAS kicks in, and it starts to look for ways and means for this to happen. It starts to look for the familiar. Now, this is really interesting because when we think about this, when we think about our brain and how it works, and we have this opportunity to um, make a decision, right? So we're making this decision. Our brain decides that it's going to help us. Now, sometimes what can happen is that the brain, the RAS starts to look for things, but the things it brings our attention to our goals, uh, might be goals, pardon me, our obstacles and, and or challenges. So it doesn't just show us like the pretty blue Tiffany box with the white bow on it. 
but rather will show things that we might have to overcome, challenges, fears that we might have to bust through. But either way, the brain starts to kick in. Now, you probably have experienced something like this in a personal matter. So I'm going to give uh, a, an example. Um, about three years ago, I decided to, to trade in, I had a, a silver Murano and I decided to trade in my Murano and my parents happened to have a vehicle that they purchased for somebody else. And this, uh, was, it was a cousin of mine. She wasn't able to take it. And so I said, well, hey, I'm looking for a new vehicle. Uh, why don't I take a look at it? And it's this really different green. It's a really different shade of green. And I was quite excited because I had never seen, it's a Ford Escape. I had never seen a Ford Escape in this color. So I live in Red Deer, Alberta. This is where I'm, where I am from. My parents are north of me by about 90 minutes. And uh, they uh, live uh, in Edmonton. So I drive to Edmonton to have uh, coffee with my parents. And I decide that, yes, I'm going to take this, uh, this green Ford Escape. So I go home, uh, sell my Murano, go pick up, you know, within a couple of weeks, go pick up this Ford, this Ford Escape, this very unique, never seen it before shade of green. Well, guess what? On my way back, on my way back, I see three, like three Ford escapes in this shade of green. You see, I was not aware that Ford made this color green. The moment I became aware, the moment I decided I wanted something, my RAS kicked in and started to show me all the other green Ford escapes. Now, that's, that's um, a bit of a different story as far as um, setting goals, right? But it's certainly a great example of how your reticular activating system can kick in. So those are two kind of pieces of how science can be brought into how you can make a shift. Now, um, you can also approach, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also approach this from a, a spiritual perspective. Right. So when I say that a belief is just a decision with evidence, right, really what that ends up happening, we think about from a spiritual perspective, when we decide we want something, right, we make this decision, we have a thought, the thought becomes a thing. So that's from the spiritual perspective. And I won't spend a lot of time talking about that today, because I want to ensure that I don't overwhelm and I keep everything very succinct and very clear. So the other piece of our brain is a goal achieving machine also ties into that very same thing. Our thoughts become things. But I guess more importantly, or digging a bit deeper, what this really is talking about is once you decide something, the universe conspires to make it happen. Now, what I share with my clients is, again, often it doesn't come wrapped in this really, really pretty bow. It kind of comes wrapped in mm, like when my children were two and three and wrapped my Christmas presents. It was a bit of a mess. It was the package, like the outer package was like kind of messy. But what they gave me was so incredibly beautiful. So when I think of creation, when I think of manifesting, when I think of, you know, bringing the science and the spirituality together, what really for me comes to, to, to mind uh, is this whole, this very, very thing, right, is how it doesn't necessarily look how I think it's going to look, but it, everything happens for me and nothing happens to me, right? So, I absolutely love sharing these stories because I think stories make such a difference. It's, it's an opportunity for you to go, oh yeah, I can totally relate to that. I can totally relate to that. You know, as we go into break here, um, really what I want to share with you is what we're going to talk about next is the challenge of an entrepreneur. So you are listening to Ignite Your Success with Rand Shell on the Inspired Choices Network. As I said, when we return, we will continue to, to discuss how shift happens. We'll be right back. 
Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with Entrepreneurial Success Coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Again, welcome back, everyone. My name is Ranshaw Van Bryce on Ignite Your, with Ignite Your Success. Today's show topic is how to make shift happen, part two. Before I went to break, I shared with you that beliefs are just decisions and your brain is a goal achieving machine. Um, you know, I got to say, I love being on Inspired uh, Choices Network. It has been such a great experience for me. Uh, if you are listening to this live or whether you're listening to the podcast uh, or on the radio, uh, you will see that I'm a new host and I'm proud to be a new host. Uh, I think one of the greatest things for me in being a new host is the stretch. The shift that was necessary for me to be here with you was immense. It really and truly was. Uh, what I was sharing earlier on Facebook, actually, the biggest fear I had truly was that I would come on here and I wouldn't know what to say, that it would be crickets. And so really what the challenge is, is to say to stay succinct and keep it like on the on the like a, on a linear path. I am a, a non neurotypical thinker. I think like this. So uh, it, the, the the challenge for me is to stay uh, on track. And I love the fact that I have these incredible people in my life who are who are guiding me. And so as we're talking about this, how shift happens and the meaning that we can give things, you know, beliefs are just decisions is what I talked about before. I think that's really important. And, um, and again, I'll use the show as an example. Uh, here's the thing. We're live. And every time I do a show at, up until this point in time, I've made, you know, something that might have stumbled upon a word or uh, got lost in a train of thought and had to loop back. And it's okay. Right. The shift that I had to make was uh, that perfection is not needed, that uh, perfect, you know, is uh, is imperfectly done is better than not being done at all. That kind of thing. What I want to share with you now, as we move from the idea that beliefs are just decisions and your brain is a goal achieving machine, I want to move into specifically what happens as an entrepreneur and more so, uh, I would say, my experience, because my experience is, is more so with entrepreneurs than people in what I would refer to as a professional working you know, for somebody else. But you know what? Here's the thing. Challenge, a challenge as an entrepreneur is we're problem solvers. And why is that a challenge? It's actually a challenge because we really focus on the, uh, on the problems that we have. Now, if we go back to the brain is a goal achieving machine and we spend our time focusing on the problems, we get more of what? Right. Dot, 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 question mark. We get more of what we don't want. We actually get more problems because we're focused on what we don't want. We're focused on the problem. 
this is the challenge. I said, as an entrepreneur, I mean, I used to pride myself. I'm, I mean, I, I, I still do to an extent, but I used to pride myself on people would say like, what's one of your superpowers? And I'd be like, oh, I can see problems and anything that I look at. I can see what needs to be done better. And I would use the word better in the, and then, and in the, use the word better in the sense of, um, not discernment, but in the sense of judgment. And often it was my own, like judging self, not necessarily judging others. Uh, but for me, the switch that had to happen as an entrepreneurial success coach was to focus on the successes, to, to be in awareness of what might be holding me back or holding my clients back, but to, but to then to switch and make the shift that was necessary. So what's the necessary shift, right? Is to look for the solutions. Because once you decide that you're going to find the solution and not focus on the problem, you can access what the brain normally does. So uh, for example, if I want to, if I'm in a cold room and I want it to be warm, I don't focus on getting rid of the cold, right? I'm focusing more so on bringing heat in. By bringing heat in, the cold dissipates. But before, right, uh, I really understood this and implemented and integrated and embodied this work, I would have spent so much time and effort trying to get rid of the cold, right? So part of what we can do is we can ask different questions. So the shift that's required is to look for solutions so you can access what the brain naturally does I promised you some guidelines and steps. So the solution is to ask different questions. So some of the questions that I ask uh, my clients, and I'm going to ask you, right? So you have a problem. You're aware of the problem. I know you're aware of the problem. Um, most times, I should say that most times we're aware of the problem. So a great question to ask is, what beliefs or stories do you have that might be holding you back? What beliefs or stories do you have that might be holding you back? So I remember I shared this story with you about I'm a good starter, but I'm not a good finisher. That was a story. It was a belief that was passed on, I say programmed. I was domesticated into, I'll, I'll use those words with my clients as domesticated into believing that I was a great starter, but not a good finisher. So that belief, that decision, that story held me back a lot, right? Held me back from maybe trying some new things because what if I couldn't finish it, right? So it also had to do with failure, which by the way, I'm going to talk about next week, which is failure is not an effort. So, you know, it also had to do with my belief around failure. But the, but the story I was saying is that if you're a good starter, you must, you must be a good finisher, you know? Um, but in the end, as I asked this question, what belief did I have that might hold me back and understood what that belief was, I could start to unpack that. And in fact, one of my businesses was to uh, work with entrepreneurs who wanted to sell their business because I was great at startups. I could get in there. I could tell them what they need to do. We could revamp their business and I would help them with their exit strategy. Fabulous business. So I used uh, a belief that I had that could have been a limiting belief but I used it for something that was so fun and so fantastic. So we can also be in awareness of that. So another great question to ask yourself, your brain is a goal achieving machine. So when you ask questions, your brain must answer the question, right? So another great question is, what is the truth in this? What is the truth in this? For example, um, I don't have the skill set to become a professional basketball player, right? So if I wanted to play ball professionally, this would be a great question to ask. What's the truth in this? I don't have the skill set to be a ball player, right? A professional ball player, right? I'm not very good at dribbling, right? I mean, could I develop the skill set to dribble? For sure. Could I develop the skill set to dribble professionally and play at my age? which is, you know, right? Uh, probably not. Probably not. So the truth in that is I don't have the skill set. But do I have the mindset to have the possibilities, which is also the truth? 100%, right? 
the last question that I like to ask, oh, and this is one of my favorite questions, and I talked about this last week as well. Who do you need to be? Right? So what do I mean by that? Chances are, if you're on listening to this, you're a doer, right? You're a doer. And if you're on live or in the comments on Inspired Choices Network, uh, in the comment box, I'd love for you to say, I'm a doer. <laughs> I'm a recovering doer. Right? And actually doing is important. Taking action is essential for sure. I mean, seriously, I could sit here and affirm all I want that uh, I'm in Costa Rica, I'm in Costa Rica, I'm in Costa Rica. But if I don't actually buy a plane ticket, drive to the airport, pack my bags, not necessarily in that order, I'm not going to be in Costa Rica. So action is important. But the importance of this particular question or the essentiality, ooh, new word, the essentiality of this question of who do I need to be, this allows me to stretch myself. I can ask questions because I'm such a doer. I can make my task list and I can say, great, I need to do these things, but who do I need to be? And again, I'm going to use this incredible, um, lovely Inspire Choices Network as an example. When this opportunity came before me, right, I needed to be courageous because I was so afraid. What if I say something? What if I make a mistake? What if I run out of things to talk about? What will I talk about? What if people don't like me? What if people like laugh at me? I mean, there was so many what ifs. There was so many what ifs. So what I decided was who I needed to be. I needed to be courageous. I needed to be passionate, right, about my mission. I needed to, uh, to uh, be abundant and prosperity, uh, prosperous, pardon me, in my thinking, right? I needed to uh, be in a position of wanting delight. I needed, like, there was just so much. That's who I needed to be. So when you think about your brain, and if a belief is just a decision, and your brain is a goal-achieving machine, and then you ask yourself, who do I need to be? you'll start to unfold things. Now, chances are truly what you're going to do first is make a to-do list or a task list, right? That's what happens with my clients. So it's okay. When you do that, just then ask yourself, well, who do I need to be in order for that to happen in order to do that, right? So one of the, when I talk about with my, with my clients, one of my superpowers as an entrepreneurial success coach is that I assist my clients to integrate and embody information into knowledge so transformation happens. So let me say that. So in, in a superpower meaning um, helping my clients, right, to integrate and embody information into knowledge so transformation happens. Why is this important? Well, let me tell you. This is important because you will receive information and tons of billions and millions of bits of information a day. And unless you know how to take that information and integrate it and embody it, transformation in your life and business won't happen. So how do we make this happen, right? So one of the things that I share is taking your information and taking it into a practice. So kind of like yoga, right? Is you take uh, different poses, right? You take the different, um, I'm just new to yoga, right? So, uh, so you take the different poses. We'll take, I, I love Kundalini yoga. So take, take the different chants, the different mantras, and you start to practice them on a regular, dare I say, daily basis. Right. And this truly is how um, a shift can happen. Right. And in order to make the shift, I'm going to share with you how to do that. But I'm going to share that with you after our break. So thank you. You're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle on Inspired Choices Network. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? 
Tuning in to ignite your success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchell Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone, to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle on Inspired Choices Network. Now, before I went to break, I talked to you about one of the shifts happening, and that was really about um, asking different questions, right? Allowing your brain to do what it naturally does. Brain's a goal-achieving machine. It needs to find an answer. So a shift can happen by changing the questions. Now, I promised you to go into the second piece of how a shift happens. I work with Raymond Hollywell's Working with the Law. And for me, this has been a life-changing book. Um, it's called The Spiritual Laws. Or, and they're like the natural laws. So Raymond Hollywell's uh, Spiritual Laws is the name of the book. And these are natural laws, kind of like the law of gravity, but they're a spiritual law. Now, many people have heard about the law of attraction, right? And the premise behind the law of attraction, of course, is where what you focus on, you create. Another way of saying that is thoughts become things. And this makes sense. When you go, we go back to the science, right? If our brain is a goal achieving machine, of course, thoughts become things. The other piece of this, though, and what's so important is letting go of how it's going to happen. This is where we as a human, I call us human species, we as a human species get caught up. You know, one of the first times that I experienced the law of attraction was um, with, buying, uh, with buying a house. And so I lived in Battleford, Saskatchewan at the time. And my ooh, let's see, yep, husband, fiance, I think about then fiance, uh, we had just both of us left relationships, right? We were moving in, we moved into a rental, and we wanted to buy a house. But when we looked at our finances, purchasing a house just wasn't in the cards for us, right? We knew that we could afford the monthly payment, but there really was no way that we could come up with the down payment. And at that time, it was even, it was more than 5%. And so one day we were walking by this incredible house. We had a new puppy, we took the puppy for a walk and saw this open house. And it was uh, really close to the river, like a block away from the river. So we could see the Saskatchewan River. Uh, it was in a, this incredibly awesome neighborhood, tons of kids. And, uh, and I was pregnant with our first child. It really, I just, I just wanted to go in. And I had said to um, Darcy, it was my former husband. I said to Darcy, we totally need to go in there. And he's like, Rachel, we can't go in there. We can't afford a house. And I was like, well, why don't we just, let's just go in and dream. Let's just go in and play. And so we walked in and the real estate agent was a family friend of Darcy's and Darcy was up front with him. His name is Brian. I think he's still in Saskatchewan. Uh, so there you go. Plug for Brian in real estate <laughs> in Battleford. And, uh, and Darcy was up front and said, Hey man, we can't like, we can't afford a house, right? We know we can afford the payment. We don't have a down payment, but Ranchal really wants to look at the house. Brian was incredible. You know, he treated us exactly as if we were going to buy the house. And I remember walking through the house and being so excited about it, right? It was like, oh, we could put the furniture here because we had just bought some leather furniture. 
Uh, we could paint the baby's room here. Uh, there was a place for the office. It was a four level split. We could put the gym in the basement. Like I just went on and on and on and on about how excited I was. And so, you know, we, we were there for like, we were there for a good hour talking about this and that. And we left and um, I remember Darcy feeling a little bummed out. And he said, he said, I think we just totally wasted Brian's time. And I'm so sad. And I was like, what if we could though? Like, like, what if we could? I mean, I, and he's like, how? I'm like, I don't know, but what if we could? And I was like, I've heard of this thing called, right? That in, 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 uh, imagination it was actually a vision board that I heard about law of attraction wasn't even out. Okay, now I'm really aging myself. And I was like, what if we, what if we had a vision? What if we created this vision? What if we imagined it? And so we did again, every day we, you know, we um, took the time to imagine what it would be like, right? We embodied it. We visualized it. We thought about cooking there, raising our kids there, like as much as I possibly could, I did that. The other thing that happened though, and this is where uh, some people forget, is I took as much action as I could. Now, I didn't worry about how we were going to come up with a deposit. We couldn't, that we didn't have the money to do that. What, but what I intuitively sensed was to take all of the action steps. So I phoned the bank and found out what we would need for, um, you know, for, the, for the, the down payment. I asked to make sure that we actually could afford like the monthly payment. I phoned the city, what, like what were the taxes? And those are probably on there, but I found out how much the taxes were, right? I, I did all the things that were necessary to own a house not having a down payment and not worrying about the how, right? And I was pregnant and I was in a new job and I was, and I was newly pregnant, right? So there was all of these reasons that we would be able to get the house, but I didn't worry about that. I just really, 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 really wanted the house. Um, Wallace D. Waddles talks about it being a magnificent obsession. It was my magnificent obsession. I picked up paint colors, right? I did all the things that were that were necessary and we didn't own the house. About a month later, my parents phoned me and they are entrepreneurs and they own a hotel and they had a surplus of income. And it was their first time that they could take this amount of money as a dividend from the hotel. And they gifted my sister and I both $10,000. And this is quite a while ago. Even now, that's a lot, right? $10,000. Well, guess how much money the down payment, the lawyer's fees, and all everything we needed was? Yep, you got it. $10,000, right? Now, I share that with you because, again, whether we're professionals or entrepreneurs, we get caught up in this idea that we need to know how we're programmed that way. If you want something, what are you supposed to do? Make a pros and cons list to make, to make the decision. If that's a good decision, figure it out, map it out, strategize, know the how first, and then you can dream. It doesn't go that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm telling you, I know, cause I've done both. <laughs> so, right. What you need to do truly is imagine as if visualize it right this is one of the steps into integrating and embodying what you want is to imagine as if right now part of this and i think is really important and often missed as well is being really clear what do i mean by that you probably hear that all the time be clear have clarity see the problem wasn't um, that I was trying to solve wasn't just that I didn't have the down payment, but the real problem, the real challenge, the real solution right, that I was looking for was I wanted to buy a house. So I didn't focus on how to get the down payment. I didn't focus on the money. I focused on what I wanted, which was the house. So clarity on what you desire is key because otherwise I would have spent time thinking about how am I going to get the down payment? How can I make more money? What extra job can I do? What strategy do I need? Do I go ask for a raise? Do I find a different job? I mean, I would have immediately went into creating, uh, um, solving problems, right? Where the solution was, I wanted the house. 
So be clear. So the piece, the shifting piece is clarity. Have the clarity of what you desire. Have the clarity of the solution, right? The solution is, in this case, it was I wanted to buy a house. That's so very important. Now, so far, um, I have shared with you a few key pieces, right? And what I love to do, um, especially if you're just joining me now, is to kind of go back and what did, what was I talking about to tie all of this in? Because making a shift happen is simple and it takes, it's just a slight shift, right? A slight shift. They're important shifts, right? So the first one, of course, is to remember that your brain is a goal achieving machine. The second one, right? Um, is a belief is just a decision, right? How we tied that into everything that we have been talking about so far, right? Was our, with our brain, right? Seeing all the Ford escapes, the green Ford escapes, once I decided I was going to have, a, uh, once I bought the Ford escape, right? So the reticular activating system kicking in. I then talked about becoming a problem solver could be your challenge right? Really what we want to do is we want to have you focus on the solution. You can focus on the solution by asking different questions, right? What beliefs or stories do you have that might be holding you back? What is the truth in this is another great question. And who do you need to be, right? Then of course, I start to tie in embodying and integrating some of the knowledge that you already have, right? So you already know more than likely what to do, right? So how do you integrate doing this, the doing of it into your day, right? And so one of the things I shared with you, of course, was the story of my house, how I wanted this house. It was not possible. We didn't have the down payment. And so one of the ways that I integrate and embody is I follow the spiritual practices uh, of Raymond Hollywell. One of them that I shared with you today was the law of attraction, right? I totally attracted into my life the down payment, right? for the house, because I was focused on what I wanted, which was the house, and I didn't focus on the solution, um, or the problem, pardon me, I didn't focus on the problem, which was I didn't have the money, right, I focused on what I wanted. Now, sometimes the solution and what you want, there's a little bit of gap there as well, right, and that's okay. It's really about having clarity, right? Which is the last thing that I brought to your attention, right? Is having the clarity of what it is that you want. And you'll hear this over and over again with different people. Lots of people say, know your why, understand your why, be clear. So we know that we're meant to be clear, but clarity can't happen if you ask yourself, how am I going to do this? if you don't know how, because if you knew how, you would do it, right? So earlier I talked about, yes, strategy is important and yes, taking action is important, but here's the thing. If, you're, if you don't know how to do something and you delay, you, you don't dream, you don't imagine, you don't visualize, you don't integrate and embody the law of attraction, as an example, the how will never come. The how only comes when you make the decision that you want it. So if you're waiting for the how to come before you make the decision, right, the, the how won't come until you make the decision. It's kind of a mind fuck, right? Truly, it, not even kind of, it truly is because we're taught, right? We're taught to know what to do first before we take a chance, right? We're, we're, we're programmed for safety and security. All right. So this last key that I talked about is shifting, right? Is shifting. So 
Let's go to commercial. You're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle on Inspired Choices Network. And after our break, I'm going to share a couple more stories with you. And once again, I'm going to recap for you very succinctly the three shifts that you can work on immediately. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchell Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back, everyone. Again, I am. Welcome Rand- back to Ignite Your oh, Success with Ranchell. <laughs> to participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. All right. Now I can say that. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ranchal Van Bryce, and I'm on Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. Today's show topic is how to make shift happen. And it was part two, um, you know, because last week I just was so excited about sharing everything. Uh, this is when I wish I was kind of like Spock where I could mind meld, right? I could, we could mind meld. You could have all the things that were in my head, uh, and you could make shift happen right away. You know, it's a process. I think like everything else, when we decide that we want to do something, there are certain steps that have to happen. And I don't know if you're like me, I get a little impatient, right? Especially if I've been facing a problem, um, for, you know, a little while, a couple of weeks or a couple of days, a couple of hours, uh, or if it's one of my groundhog days, have you ever seen that show with Bill Murray, um, the groundhog day where he lives a day over and over again. And each day he learns something new. He makes changes in his behavior. He shows up differently. And then the day progresses further and further. Sometimes for me, that's how some of my life has felt uh, like a groundhog day. There are certain experiences that I keep on having over and over again. When I started to realize that the reason that was happening was because I was showing up. So the person that I was being was showing up. The person who created the problem was showing up trying to create the solution. Makes sense, right? If the person that's trying to uh, to create the solution is the same person, the same mind, the same brain, the same mindset, the same behaviors, the same limiting beliefs, the same actions, if that person is the same, it's darn difficult, uh, let me say that, and it's damn hard, damn hard to shift it because of the way that you're programmed, the way that I was programmed. Um, I think what's important, though, is when we have the Groundhog Days, we get radically honest with ourselves. We look at, you know, who we are being, um, what are we doing, um, what, you know, what actions are we taking? Are we in self-sabotage? Are we in procrastination? Are we uh, allowing fear to overcome us? Are we allowing a limiting belief of I'm not good enough? And I raised my hand because that was mine. I had a huge um, limiting belief of I'm not, I'm not good enough. And it really didn't matter what I was doing. There was always this sense of I'm not good enough. And it didn't matter how successful I was. I mean, I when when I had the curse franchises, we were um, one of the one of the most successful curves um, in Canada, if not North America. You know, we had eight franchises. I say we because I was in partnership. Um, we had eight franchises. We were doing over a million dollars in uh, in sales, uh, well over a million dollars in sales a year. And I still felt like I wasn't smart enough, that I wasn't doing a good enough job, that there I must be missing something. I must be doing something wrong. It was huge. Uh, it was debilitating. And uh, because of my programming as a child, my I am not enough button was was, uh, very, very predominant in my life. And I pretended that it wasn't there. I took a great saying, fake it to make it, right, which makes perfect sense. I took that one step further. And what you had was this really fake individual who was pretending that everything was okay until I hired a coach. 
and, uh, uh, and actually I had two coaches. I had a strategic coach and I had a mindset coach and I loved both of my coaches because um, when I, with the curves franchises, what ended up happening was we ended up uh, finding ourselves in a situation where the market was oversaturated and what we were doing strategies we had put in place were no longer working. So I started with a strategic coach. Uh, and then what ended up happening was I realized that I was deathly afraid of rejection. And so it's difficult, right, to try new things if you're afraid of rejection. It's difficult to, I mean, as a coach, um, I have conversations, you know, on a regular basis, almost on a daily basis with people about uh, entering into one of my programs. If I was afraid of rejection, uh, those would be difficult conversations to have. But here's the, yeah, here's the lie. Uh, I, I paused at that uh, for obvious reasons. So here's the lie. The lie is that the beliefs, uh, limiting beliefs go away. They don't. So if you still have a facing a limiting belief, I want you to know you're normal and it's okay, right? We learn how to embody and integrate so in, in particular, I talk about embodying and integrating, implementing the spiritual laws so that as you're facing the limiting beliefs, like I'm not enough, or I don't have worthiness or value, um, you know what to do. You know how to show up differently. You know the mindset shift that is necessary for you to create the life that you want. I mean, I'm so passionate about that with, uh, with my clients. Uh, we, I put myself in that category. We got into business because we wanted a life and wouldn't it be great if your business could be the vehicle to the life and that you weren't postponing your life because you had a business. I want to say that again, wouldn't that be great if you could have a life and your business was a vehicle to your life? It's possible, but not with the max, not with the same mindset that you have that I do know. How do I know? Been there, done that. So I'm going to recap here really quickly as we, um, and the show. So what I shared today was uh, a few things. What I'm going to sh- wind up, sorry, wind up tonight is sharing the shifts. Oh, that was really hard. Sharing the shifts. Shift one, you cannot solve the problem with the same mind or brain that created it. So you need a shift in how you process, which can come from focusing on the solution and not the problem. You do this by asking different questions. Shift number two taking information and moving it into practice. You do this by integrating, my suggestion, integrating and embodying the spiritual truths. This takes time and a deep understanding of the laws and clarity is necessary all the way through. Shift number three, let go of the how. This can be hard. <laughs> so I have let go of the har, uh, the how, and I know this can be hard. So here's the deal. Um, if you would like to make a shift happen and you understand that the brain is a goal achieving machine, if, you, if you're like, yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, now, what do I do? I'm going to encourage you to reach out to me. Uh, earlier, I gave you my email address. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's RVB, as in Ramshell Van Bryce, RVB at Ignite Your Success. It's the name of the show. So I make it really easy, igniteyoursuccess.ca. Email me, let's have a conversation. I mean, sometimes it's just a quick convo with me and we can shift some of those limiting beliefs that you have by looking at making new decisions and providing new evidence with your new decision. What's hard about this, and, I, and I, don't, I don't believe in hard, but I, I will sometimes use the word. What's hard about this is not having clarity, not understanding what you truly desire, right? Not understanding on what the solution is that you should be focused on. What's hard is living the life that you have, living your Groundhog Day. That's what's hard. This shift can be really, really simple. And I would love to guide you in this. I'd love to be, I'd love to be the guide. This, I am passionate about this. 
as I said earlier, I talk so fast in the beginning of the show. I gave you so much information last week because I'm so passionate about this. I just really want you to have the life that you want. I my hope for you is that you can be big, be bold, be brilliant, be brilliant. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success Everyone. with Ranchelle. Ranchelle returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Ranchell returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.